Okay, y'all. Other things from the Google Developer Conference. I found this one funny. I'm ecstatically thrilled about it, but I found it funny. For those of you who haven't been keeping up and didn't watch the Google Developer Conference and things and so forth, I highly suggest you go to Google's channel and watch three, three videos. Day one, day two, and the Google TV thing. At the very least, watch day one and day two. The Google TV thing is kind of optional. I'll do a video pretty much covering all that. Uh, but the VP8 codex is going entirely open source and license free. This is great news. It's even better news is that Firefox, Chrome, and Opera are going to be supporting this WebM codec. What this means is HTML5 now has a true cross-platform, cross-browser video codec pack, which means we can all encode our videos for HTML5 using one free open source codec. Thank you. It is an H.264. H.264 is what Apple and Internet Explorer are going with. They're not going to embrace WebM and the VP8 codec. And I'm going to tell you why that doesn't matter worth a crap. Adobe, the big, bad, evil, closed company that Apple is protecting us from, is going to support WebM. Which means if you're using one of these browsers, and the browsers are Internet Explorer and Safari, that doesn't support WebM. All you need is the Adobe Flash plugin, and all WebM videos will play through Flash. Now, this is bad news for iPhone supporters because Apple has declared war on the evil Adobe. But this means, as far as desktop and every mobile platform except for the iPhone, there is now one codex to rule them all. And by the way, it's open source and it's license free. That sounds good for everything. It's ironic that the company standing most in the way of this is Apple, seconded only by Microsoft. That's right. These two companies, big surprise, are against a free and open web. Wow, that's a shocker. Um, it's like, and, you know, this anybody this is happening. Um, you know, it's like the newest releases of Dreamweaver and ARSI, it's, they're supporting HTML5 in newer, bigger, and better ways. It's like, it, it's, okay, it's here. I really thought IE got this with the fact that IE9 was going to finally support all the CSS tags that it hadn't been supporting, uh, and they were going to support HTML5, supposedly, but they're standing behind this big backwards thing like Apple is that they don't want to embrace an open web protocol. I, I just, I don't get it. Uh, the, the good news is it probably isn't going to, unfortunately, it probably isn't going to hurt IE as much as it's going to hurt Apple uh, because IE has well has good support for Flash and Flash is very unresource intensive on Windows, which means Adobe has kind of fixed this for Microsoft, even though Microsoft isn't embracing this. So Microsoft's going to get the benefit without having to actually do any of the work. Apple, on the other hand, has sh basically shot themselves in the foot. Um, and this will become more and more apparent as things move forward. So, like, kudos on that. That's great. That's, the other thing I love about this is um, Fora, the people who have been writing the OGG codex, are actually jumping forward on this. And Google has addressed the fact that historically, Fora and the FFmpeg, which is pretty much 
the video conversion tool that Linux uses, you know, things like Caden Live are basically built directly on top of FFmpeg. Historically, didn't work very well with Fora. Well, Fora is now jumping in, and they're going to work with Google and everyone on v and on VP8. Uh, so they're now transitioning over to that, which is why Mozilla has begun to quickly transition over to that. Firefox, I want to say, what is it, 357 or whatever, is going to have full web in. But, you know, uh, be looking for that. And they've already released, if you go to the development site, which I'll include in the description for this video, the needed patches to make this stuff work with FFmpeg, which means over the next calendar year, expect this to slowly work its way into all the Linux districts. Which means Linux will be good to go for this. The next uh, Adobe suites will be ready to go for this. Uh, hopefully, Apple, at least for their video suites, adopts this. Because if they don't, it's going to cause a it's going to cause a real interesting rift in the coming time. Um, I think that's pretty much the most interesting thing from day one of the developer conference. So, yeah, kudos. Uh, do I have time? Yeah, I got about four minutes, so I got time to get into GTV. Day two, uh, Google talks about Android and Google TV. I wish them luck with Google TV, but I'm not sure they've solved the big problem. You know, they talk about, oh, we're partnered with Intel, we're partnered with Best Buy, and we're partnered with Dish. Um, they need to be partnered with more than this. They need to be partnered with DirecTV, Comcast, Verizon, yada, yada, and so forth. They're right about one of the big problems with moving TV to uh, uh, moving the internet and everything to TV is A, people try and put the internet in this closed box, and they try and dumb it down. And they shouldn't go the other way. They should just add TV to internet. It's like, this is a computer that happens to do TV also. I built full media center boxes using both Linux and Windows. When you adopt this route, you find the biggest obstacle to this stuff isn't that the technology isn't here, it's that the people that should be embracing the technology don't. And due to federal regulation, all they have to do is say, no, we don't like this new thing, and they effectively squash it. And I don't think Google is signed because they're talking about things like IR blaster boxes and so on, which are going to be built into their thing. I'm like, mm, yeah. The advantage of the digital cable, direct TV, and dish network box is it's this box I set on top of my TV, and I plug the little coax cable into it, and I take my remote, and I go boop, and everything just works. There's no reason a computer set top box couldn't work like that. Except for the fact that federal law says anyone who's using, who's selling a descrambler, which is what's necessary to descramble the cable or satellite signal, who isn't the cable or satellite company, can't be doing anything but stealing cable or satellite TV. Well, it's not true anymore. But effectively, we've given these companies a monopoly on the ability to sell the boxes. Which means. I can have the best thing ever, but if I can't get them to sell it, it doesn't happen. Now, Dish supposedly has seen light. We'll see. We'll see what they're going to charge for this GTV service through the Dish box because they have a virtual monopoly on it. It'll be interesting. Uh, the other thing is, like, they were talking about the YouTube wave thing and, like, you know, it made it sound like Netflix for the Xbox. It really did. It made it. I hope that's not true, but we'll find out this fall. But it made it sound like I go to my computer and I set up my YouTube channel, and then I go to my Google TV box and I watch my YouTube channel, which is what you do with your Netflix on Xbox thing. I'm just like, no, I should be able to do everything from here. All I need is a gyro mouse with nine buttons on it, and I go. <laughs> And an auto type program, I'm good to go. I got everything I want. The internet isn't dumbed down, everything's open. I'm up on time. T out all. Watch those videos. There's some great new features coming to Android and other stuff.
Ciao, peace out.